Hello, my name is Dave and today we're going to look at this uh, wonderful and charming Takahashi TS-50 telescope. It's a 50 millimeter telescope and it's one of the earliest Takahashi's made with the Takahashi brand on it at least uh, from about 1971. It's also one of the smallest Takahashi's and we'll compare this with a modern product, a Takahashi product and see the similarities and differences. Also compare it with other uh, brands, other types of telescopes of the similar kind of uh, uh, aperture and so forth. Okay, let's open this up and take a look and see how it's packed inside. I did do some restoration work on this box, so I may have not gotten everything quite perfect, but so basically you have the legs on top here. <coughs> Some handy silicone gel, original, and uh, here's non-original, the tools are original, container isn't, so a couple, a couple of wrenches, here's the eyepiece box, those are original, Takahashi. And the packing of this stuff in here, I had to deduce this a little bit. It's for sure that this is where the counterweight went because it's reinforced here. The box here, the cardboard box, is something I added just to a little additional, for a little additional protection. Anyway, there's the counterweight. And it would, I uh, guess, have just been tied in there with a piece of reinforced wood there. But, uh, it would make it very easy for this thing to bounce around and slam into the finder. And the finder is, was all dinged up. I've retouched it quite a bit, but it's, it, it was all dinged up. Anyway, you can see that these uh, ties here hold things in. Now, this part is interesting. There's a hole in the box itself. And this bolts onto the equatorial head, like so. And then this comes out. So now you have this all stored in there. This and the counterweight shaft in there. Attached so. Okay, so now with a little bit of work, you can get this thing assembled. Okay, let's take a look at some of the interesting features on this telescope. Uh, one of the things that's very unusual with this scope, you don't see many like this. When I first got the scope, I tried to pull this off and I kept trying to pull it off and it was jammed on there. Well, it's not jammed on there, it was screwed on there. I cannot believe that. This is a heavy duty hunk of metal here and it's uh, threaded on there. Not only that, check this out. The finder has the same kind of a thing. How many times have, have you seen a finder that has a thread on? Even modern Takahashi's don't have that, I don't believe. I don't know of anyone that does. Uh, okay, so now we have this uh, beautiful little 50 millimeter telescope. Another interesting thing, and some of you may not even know what this is. This is for mounting a camera. Let me show you how it looks. And I've gone to the trouble of finding a period correct Nikon. This Nikon actually might be newer. <laughs> too new. Anyway, it's an old old kind of film camera. I used to shoot this back in the days. Wonderful, wonderful camera. So that goes on there. So you can put your camera on there and of course adjust the balance. 
And now you can use the telescope to guide while you take an exposure. You wouldn't probably want to take any, you wouldn't shoot with a long focal length here. You might take a wide angle shot, a 50 millimeter or 35 millimeter, something like that, a wide angle shot, and use the telescope uh, to track. Okay, any of you that are familiar with Takahashi uh, will recognize this. This is almost identical. It is, is shocking how, how identical this is to a modern Takahashi. As a matter of fact, the, the slow motion controls here, the locks, everything is very, very similar. This has a um, tangent kind of a declination slow motion, which is most adequate, more than adequate for what you, what you might need. Here's the nice, oh, it's beautiful and smooth after all these years. The thing works just beautifully, as you would expect from a Takahashi. Um, superb, just absolutely superb all the way through. Here's your declination slow motion beautiful mechanically superb and look at this chrome the chrome is exquisite after this you know this is 50 year old telescope nearly so um there's that these things have changed a little bit the appearance has changed a little bit but not much and even the the knob has the distinctive configuration Beautiful, beautiful little telescope. This is something you won't see too often. A pair of Takahashi 50 millimeter telescopes uh, from different generations. This is the FC50, uh, probably from around 2000 or so, just to guess. Anyway, it's a much newer scope than this from 1971, but still not brand new. Both of these are 50 millimeter telescopes, uh, but as with everything Takahashi, absolutely everything is perfect superb quality this is of course a fluorite telescope this is not a fluorite this is a doublet uh, standard achromata I believe no big deal about uh, about the basic lens design it does have a collimatable cell the same as this and I'll show you a close-up of those things here's a front-on shot of the two lens cells you can see that the lens cells are uh, virtually identical when you look when you look closely at these mounts, you can see the family relationship. You can see that the construction is very, very similar. Obviously, uh, this is a more modern P2Z mount. Clearly, very nearly identical. And obviously, the paint is different. Some of the some of the features, some of the features that are chromed here are not chromed here. They're painted here. The P2Z does have this device. It has the polar alignment, and of course the P2Z was really designed for astrophotography. So the P2Z has these uh, for adjusting the azimuth, and this for adjusting the altitude. And the um, older Takahashi mount doesn't have that feature. Okay, let's compare the Takahashi to a uh, nominally similar Unitron. This is Unitron. 750. It's a 50 millimeter scope just like the uh, Takahashi and it's uh, a little bit older but uh, my newer one would be about the same. They're, they didn't make too many major changes in the uh, Unitrons over the years. Um, several very big distinctive differences right away. First of all the heft, the sheer heft, the sheer weight of both of these. It, it, this is at least twice as much. The Takahashi weighs twice as much. Doesn't necessarily mean it's a better scope, but uh, well, in terms of amount, it, it very well may mean that it's a better telescope. Um, the Takahashi is a an equatorial mount, which is much nicer than an Altaz. This is a superb Altaz mount. The Unitron is wonderful and, and very, very nice. And it, for a lightweight telescope, you're going to carry around. Very, very, very convenient, very nice. <clears throat> but. The advantages of the equatorial mount are numerous. And the fact that it's so hefty means that you could do a lot with it. You could big, put a much bigger scope on it uh, and so forth. Uh, so the Takahashi is superior in uh, both of those respects. In terms of overall stability, the just the overall weight of the mount and the, the thickness of the legs and so forth, Takahashi wins. Ta Takahashi wins on it in every respect. 
And uh, when you compare them uh, optically, the Unitron is a good telescope. There's nothing wrong with the Unitron. And a Takahashi 50mm is a beautiful telescope as well. So uh, I, I think they're wonderfully charming and different, each in its own respect. The Takahashi is just, like all things Takahashi, superb. It's comparable to Zeiss. I hope you've enjoyed this tour of the Takahashi TS-50 Telescope. Thank you.